Mai te pō ki te ao mārama, ti he mauri ora. Kia ora, I'm Tim Ueda Morrison. Te ahi, fire. Ahi kā, home fires. And wherever your home fires burn, welcome. No mai, hara mai. This video is a brief summary of New Zealand's involvement with the IFE since 1924. But before I carry on with that, I'd like to tell you a little story about how we, the Māori of Aotearoa, New Zealand, came to possess fire. The radiant moon of Rona illuminates the night sky. Smoke invades the space below a hundreds of campfires in a traditional Māori village. We take particular interest on one campfire. It is the campfire of Maui Tiki Tiki Ataranga. He's just finishing his kai. He sits and stares into the fire. His eyes grow bigger. I wonder where fire comes from. Maui looks up to see the embers flying. Maui, being the curious, cheeky person he is, wants to know more. So he waits till everyone in the village is asleep. He runs from village to village, extinguishing all the fires of the world until there were no more fires. He returned back to his whare and waited. There was an uproar in the village. Oh, how can we cook our hangi without no fire? How can we stay warm at night? We can't possibly live without fire, you know. Everyone in the village were moaning, groaning in anger. Hold on, people. Someone will have to go and see the goddess of fire at the ends of the earth. Her name is Mahuika. Excuse me, but that is one name that we should not utter. Sorry about it. Oh, well, no more uttering of Mahuika's name then. Oh, anyway. But someone's got to go and ask for fire. Otherwise we won't survive. No, I'm not going. I'd rather stay home and watch Netflix. What about Maui? He might want to go. Maui's eyes open to the sound of his name. He launches himself out of the whare and appears in front of the people of the village. I suppose I can get fire for you fellas. Everyone jumps for joy as their champion superhero. Maui is paraded through the village. Oh, what? The Institute of Fire Engineers was established by our 10 founding members back in 1918. A hundred years later, we are a global professional body with over 10,000 members. Because it started in the UK a um, hundred years ago and it was a group of uh, uh, chief fire officers who said, look, we've got to do something better because there were hundreds of people dying in public building fires. So they got together and realised that no matter what uh, type of um, how good your response was, uh, people were dying before they, the fire service arrived. So they realised we need to have a more systematic fire engineering approach and we need to have better trained, qualified people. IFE New Zealand was founded in 1924 to promote, encourage and improve the science and practice of fire extinction, fire prevention and fire engineering and all related operations. The Institution of Fire Engineers is a, a professional body put together by individuals who care about fire safety and fire prevention. They work in fire engineering, in fire services, uh, fire um, equipment manufacturing and on all related aspects of public, edu public education, emergency response. IFE New Zealand has 400 strong membership base. Um, we had varied professions. A lot of our membership comes from Fire Emergency New Zealand. Contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, it's not just a fire service organisation. It is an organisation for anybody and everybody that got an interest in fire science and fire engineering. Look, it's been a fundamental part of the development of the New Zealand Fire Service right back in the 1920s through every phase of our development. And if I can just speak from a personal point of view, it was an important part of my early years, um, sitting the IFE exams, getting involved in field days, and seeing what a professional contribution they made to the fire industry. And I also uh, like the way it gave you international connections. You became part of an international network of fire professionals. The Institution of Fire Engineers has actually joined forces with Engineering Council of UK, so we now offer engineering technician qualifications 
through to chartered fire engineer status. So because of that, we now have chartered fire engineers within the institution of fire engineers here within New Zealand. We have fire technicians, uh, engineering technicians. Definition of 50 years of dedicated service to your brigade and community, and that's for the many brigades and communities that we've worked. And while there are other bodies, SFPE and, and few others, FPA, that do deal in fire engineering, they, are not, they don't have the same spread or breadth that the institution has. So I see the institution growing its knowledge. We have got space engineers, we've got railway engineers, we've got aircraft engineers, that are all part of the institution. And their role has been dealing with fire in all those different environments. Let's go back to part two of Maui and his quest for fire. Maui walks to the ends of the earth and finds a huge mountain glowing red hot with heat. At the bottom of the mountain, Maui sees a cave. Before he enters, he mutters a short karakia. Tafiri matea, hear me bo. As I may need to call on you if I get into trouble. Is that all good? Maui enters a huge cavern, surrounded by lava flowing rivers and lava blowing geysers. Who dares trespasses here in my dwelling? Maui so confident, but pretends to be scared. It is me, Maui. Mahuika, the goddess of fire, rises up out of the lava. Her hair made out of flames and black holes where her eyes once were. She sniffs the air and launches herself closer to Maui. The famous Maui Tiki Tiki Atarangai. Maui smiles and is surprised that Mahuika has heard of him. Huh? You know who I am? Oh, gee, I'm flattered. What do you want? Well, the files of the world have been put out by some amazingly handsome idiot and I have just risked my life to come to the ends of the earth to see you, Mahuika, a oh great fire goddess, you. Mahuika's face changes to the point where she actually looks quite chuffed. She pulls a burning fingernail from her hand and gives it to Maui. Take this fire as a gift to your people. Respect this fire as you respect me. Maui again acts scared, but makes a yuck face as he has handed her fingernail. Okay, oh, thank you, O oh wise one. We shall respect you forever. See you later. Maui leaves the mountain with the fingernail. He stops at a river, looking at his reflection in the water, pondering to himself. What if Mahuika had no fire left? Where would the fire come from then? Oops! Maui drops the fingernail into the river. He watches the fire of the nail go out. He makes an oops face and tiptoes back to Mahuika's lair. Who dares trespass us here in my domain? Oh, hey, Ma, it's, um, it's me, Maui. What? Yeah, sorry, um, I was running up back to the village and I tripped over a moor and dropped the fingernail in the river. Can I get another one, please? Well, okay. But only if I get one thing from you. Anything. You name it. Can I get a selfie with you? A selfie? Uh, okay. Without hesitation, Mahuika pulls out her iPhone X and takes a selfie next to Maui. And... Mini Mini Mai. Oh, the mokas would never believe me otherwise. Here you go, Maui. Mahuika hands Maui another fingernail. Thanks again, Ma. As IFE New Zealand, what do we need? We really need youth to come through uh, and we need to make the channels easier for them to come through and for them to know that uh, these industries are here and, and we need people now. What we're really missing is a pathway and the qualifications available at the lower levels and a pathway that means that someone from a school level can be tempted into the fire industry and that we can capture good people when they're young to get them into the industry now so that we can develop them, uh, have them develop into a, you know, a lifelong career in fire engineering.
A lot of people actually don't know what the fire industry is. But if you're in a building, you have a look around a building, you have a look at how many different fire safety features you um, have within that building. You have that fire exit signs, you may have a fire alarm, you may have a fire sprinkler. You've had an evacuation consultant who's done the evacuation for the building and trained the people within that building to get out safely. You have a variety of people that come along and touch that building that are within the fire industry and unfortunately it is an unknown industry. So how does one become a fire engineer? At the moment there is no courses apart from if you're going to do a um, apprenticeship program through a sprinkler or alarm technician company they have competence which is the level two to four courses. Apart from that it's the big jump up to the master's program. Those are the only courses we have in fire at the moment. This has also been a very important program from the point of view of industry collaborating with the government and industry collaborating with their own institutions. And so this large uh, gap has been identified and is being addressed and that leads on to higher qualifications as well. And for example, the very important component, which is the New Zealand Diploma in Fire Engineering. MIT has been working with the IFE, the Institute of Fire Engineers, to develop a new New Zealand Diploma in Engineering in Fire Engineering. It's a course um, which is needed in the industry right now. It will also give industry an opportunity to take the ownership of the qualification and, and work with the providers to uh, decide on the topics covered and the content of the program which should meet their needs and so that the graduates coming out from MIT is work ready. The Diploma in Fire Engineering by the Institute of Fire Engineers is just a wonderful move um, forward because education is key. That's why we partnered with the Institute of Fire Engineers and we really feel it will give the fire technicians an opportunity to further develop and add value to this very um, um, important industry. And that brings us to our final part of how Maui acquired fire. Maui going back to Mahuika 16 more times, giving the most ridiculous excuses. Uh, the tiny fire at the river gave me a fright, then accidentally ate your fingernail. It started raining. It started snowing. It started raining and snowing. For each excuse, Mahuika gave Maui a fiery nail. Mahuika was down to her second to last infected toenail and seeing Maui return, he was not at all happy. How did I know that you were coming back? I guess you want my last two nails. Uh, if that's not too much to ask for, you tricked me. I thought we were friends and now I'll have to punish you. Mahuika throws the nail down to the ground by Maui's feet. Fire surrounds him. Mahuika consumes the whole cavern. Hey. What's going on? We are friends. So give me your last stinking toenail so we can be best of friends. I can't believe I fell for your trickery. Maui has to escape. He transforms into a kahu and flies out of the volcano's crater to the sky. But the lava spews out of the volcano so high that his wings get singed, turning them a glowing red. He transforms back into a man and dives into the river to avoid the lava. By now the lava flows into the water, making part of its steam and boil. Maui leaps out of the hot river. Mahuika launches herself out of the volcano. He is desperate and calls for Tafiri Matea for help. Tafiri Matea, please give me a hand, please, boo. Immediately, storm clouds gather and rain starts pouring. The river is cooled by the rain. Lava flows turn to stone. And Mahuika crashes on top of her mountain. The flame of Mahuika is almost out. But she's not about to give up just yet. With the last of her strength, Mahuika rips her very last toenail that was once fire red and throws it at Maui in anger. She throws it so hard that it splits into five pieces. He clocks Mahuika as he falls back into her volcanic home. He looked back to where the toenails were, and they had lodged themselves into five different trees in the forest. The Kaikomako, Mahoe, Totara, Patete, and Pukatea, all native trees of New Zealand.
Maui returns to his village, not with fire as the villagers had wished, but with dry wood from the Kaikomako tree. The villagers were confused, but Maui then showed them how to rub two sticks of the Kaikomako together to make fire. A gift from Maui's encounter with Mahuika. The villagers were over the moon at this new discovery, and they were able to cook and keep their families warm forever. To this day, the kahu, the native hawk of Aotearoa, still retains the singed red feathers on the underside of its wings, as a reminder of how close Maui was to death. Where is IFE New Zealand heading in the next hundred years? I actually see IFE as being the main teaching body for getting people into the fire alarm industry or into a fire career. I actually see the IFE becoming a requirement for IQP in the future because it is an international recognised qualification. And it's very, very hard to argue when people are talking from a knowledge base as large as that. And we also want to be able to have our peers in the fire industry come with us, join us, and actually share our knowledge. So it's not holding all the knowledge within it, it's getting people that are our members to actually go out and share their knowledge to the wider community. When I look around at my colleagues, you know, there's so many of us that are old white guys with, you know, with grey hair and, and, and it's, you know, our societies and our laws have sort of been built on that. But there's a lot of movement to try and change that and I'm really conscious of it. So, you know, oh, there shouldn't be guys like me standing here. So, you know, but I look, you know, that's the awareness is there and the commitment is there, but the results aren't. And that being said, to have people of different cultures, male, female, within the industry, I see that as a, as a huge positive, and that's the way we would like to go, and that's the, what we're trying to promote at the moment. I've just, uh, just found out that on the International General Assembly that there's only 5% of the position holders are female. Um, I know in New Zealand that there, there's a very small number on the committee, so we really want to increase that, uh, that number of women. Um, like I said, that, w that we need to, to challenge the norms, uh, we need the diversity of thought, um, and we can't expect people to make decisions for us um, when they don't know anything about us. And there you have it. The IFE continue to blaze a trail in New Zealand, and thanks to Maui, fire continues to be our taonga, or treasure for us to respect and to keep under control so we can keep our families of tomorrow safe. Tēnā koutou katoa.